wild times. Woo! Here we Woo! go. Big episode number Cheers, 130. Cheers. Fat at, tire why, to the Why is yours in a glass? Because I poured two fat tires into my stein. That's wicked smart. I'm not going to lie. Exactly. It's such it's a smart. delightful treat. It now you get two of them. Um, hey. What's up? What's up, pa- gentlemen? Pat's Garage. <laughs> we should rename the podcast Pat's Garage. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to actually fight you when this podcast. Well, I mean, that Leave is that where, in. That is where I put it. Leave so. that in. Leave that in. I'm going to fight our nine-year-old producer, Kyle. Um, all right. Well, we're back. We're rolling. And it's episode 130. We're in Pat's garage. It was chaos this morning. Dude. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know how to begin. I just have to shut off my anger uh, about the situation. <laughs> Uh, and just have a good time, and that's. What I just I meant do it was chaos because we were scrambling with cables. We were getting stuff back from Animal Con. Well, yeah, I mean, we by we you mean me and Kyle. Yeah, yeah. Patrick and I each had a beer. We yeah, helped. I was running cables sure. in the laundry room. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I tested yeah. a little. So yeah, we got that. to Pat's Garage, the name of our podcast now. Uh, and there was a weight bench set up in the middle of the studio. I've never seen you angrier than when you saw the weight bench. <laughs> there was a there's a cabinet unit being uh, finished. And a uh, very strong uh, chemical smell. I like it. I, I think people respect the fact that we don't have our shit together. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah, I do. Sure, I think I really that's, a, that's a good way to think about it. Mm-hmm. We're announcing a contest with oh. a sweet prize. Oh, dude, a huge prize. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. Yeah, that's coming what up a little good? bit later in the show. We got any news? What's, What's in the, the news? news? <laughs> What's in the news? Uh, so I always like from the underground. Right? It's kind fun. Of, kind of yeah. a thing. Yeah. That, Especially do, when they're big, bigger than an insect. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Kyle, pull up a picture of a leaf-tailed gecko, would you? Take a look at this critter right here. Tell All me what right. you think of this. Let's see if you can even spot it. I know Patrick knows what it is because we've seen him together in Madagascar. Go to the, go to the third picture over there, Kyle. Third yeah, one it, over. Look at that, Peter. There's an animal in there. Yeah. You so, know, the only reason I can spot this is because I've, we've talked about this before. Many times. But yeah. the first time, I could not see the leaf-tailed gecko at all. I didn't know it was there. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Um, there's a new species of leaf tail. I mean, there's always new species being discovered in Madagascar, sure. especially when it comes to geckos, chameleons, sure, you know, yeah. whatnots. New species, what-nots. uh, Europlatus garamassos was discovered. Nailed it. Yep. <laughs> garamasso? How would you say it? I don't know. Um, a I new leaf tail gecko species only just confirmed because it looked very similar. It was discovered in the early 2000s. Sure. Of course, it looked like everything else, but they did the genetics on it. Sure enough, new species. All right, so how exciting is that? Uh, to me, it's like a two out of ten. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> what about, you know, uh, like... I'm also a two out of ten handsome on the pod, so <laughs> that's, that's my number today. No, here, here's, here's what it is, right? It had some distinguishing traits, including a different tongue color. And that's what scientists do now. They go, ooh, look at this. There's one thing slightly different. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then they look for any which way to diverge that as its own species so they can publish something and be, be credited with finding a new species, which in this case they did, and it was successful. And it's fair. It's a fair justification. Yeah. It, I just don't know that it really matters that much. So what is the excitement in being able like okay so it's such like a small variation does the excitement come for the people who are finding these animals come yes. in the fact that they get to publish this paper no nobody's excited not even the person who, <laughs> right. and that's the thing if this person ever hears a podcast they're going to hate me for this but they're not excited by it they just need to this is the this is the model that i always talk about that's broken they need to do this and need to publish this as a finding so that they can get more funding to continue their work. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. And it doesn't, I, I shouldn't say they're not excited. I mean, some people are excited. You're confusing, you know, one Europlatus with another Europlatus because the two tongues are different color and they live in the same, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? You know what I mean? It's like, it's all cool. They're all cool leaf tailed geckos. It's cool to figure out the speciation. It is important for genetic diversity and understanding it. But at the end of the day, you're sort of just describing it in order to get your funding, continue your Yeah, work. well, also, like, you're in Madagascar. You're trudging through the woods, the forest, yep. the whatever you call it. Yep. You're studying stuff. Some people are doing this for months at a time. Many months, yeah. And they're probably Years. doing some sort, yep. of, uh, some sort of survey, yep. some sort of reptile survey. Yep. And Perfect they see survey. something, and they're like, Oh, cool. A leaf-tailed gecko. Those are cool. They're hard to see. Yep. They're hard to find. Can you see it? Can you see it, DeLuca? No, I can't. Where is it? There it is. Ha, ha, ha. Cool. Whoa, it's tongue's weird. Yeah. That's right? pretty much how that so goes. So it probably is the really exciting. exciting thing when you're out yeah. there for five months. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. They were like, why is its tongue neon blue? It's pretty cool. I like it. I like it's important to have a bank and an understanding of all the genetic diversity. I just don't know that regardless of who the herpetologist was that studied and published this, if he was like, oh my God, it's got a blue tongue. It's got to be different. You now, know what I mean? Now, probably, let me, let me, probably let me a little more chill. Play a little devil's advocate here. Yeah. Because when we were in uh, Han Son Dong in uh, Vietnam <laughs> and, and you found that snail Cancel. and you took out your field guide to Vietnamese snails. Yeah. And you were like, this is an undescribed snail. You were yeah. pretty damn excited. That's cooler. It's like a whole undescribed one, not one with a different colored tongue. We don't uh, know the difference between the, the tongue well, was undescribed. You know what? Maybe I'm just jealous. Okay. Maybe yeah, I'm just jealous like of it. the guy with the cool gecko tongue. So, um, what, what, Forrest, what is your favorite, most favorite animal that has been discovered recently? It can be five years, 10 years, one year, two years. Like, what were you the most stoked about? Hmm. That's a good question. It is. Most Appreciate favorite. That. Recent discovery. Amazing. Mm. It's one of the greatest interview questions ever asked. Well, I'm not interviewing him. I'm having a conversation with him. Well, it's it's it's, a, it's weird because you don't get the megafauna, right? It's very, very rare for anything large to be discovered, right? Yeah, well, of course. The, lar- the last big discovered animal was the Saula, really, in the late 90s. That was the last really big. Mm-hmm. You What's know, the ev- Saula? Uh, We've talked about it. Big, I know. Big bovine big like wild cattle in the vietnamese mountains vietnamese um, mountains okay. yeah it's beautiful i think um what's my favorite discovery recently i don't know there was a there was a pretty good uh frog discovery a little like purple slimy looking frog i don't remember what it was called well i think um, we talked about oh, that yeah. On the pod. yeah yeah it was uh it was a suriname the chocolate frog Chocolate ah. frog in the oh, Peruvian yeah. Amazon. Look at that thing. I thought that was pretty neat. You know, it's got that little like slimy body. It's pointy nose. Beautiful, it's pretty weird. Glistening. That's what my yeah. hair used to look like in in uh, high school when I'd go on a date. That just do you remember she- that where LA you just look. put as yeah. much wet look gel dude, as you could get in your wet hair? Wet look gel turns mo- into crust instantly. Dude, dude, dude. my mom yeah. used to buy this green gel from like the dollar store. That's I that's it. what I had. I it was literally the bubbles called in it. Yeah, the little air bubbles in it. La yeah. looks, you're right. Yeah. But even the worst version from Dollar General. Also, I feel like giving this frog the name the Chocolate Frog was like they could have gone another direction. Yeah, but it's Harry Potter. It's mystical and magical. It's delightful. It looks like uh, what comes out of a like a baby into the diaper. Yeah, it does. They could have called it the diaper smear frog. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, yeah. what's the name of the poop that comes out? Meconium? Meconium. Meconium. Yeah. That should definitely have been the name. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know, man. It's tough because I feel like none of the recent discoveries of new species have been monumental, to be honest. Like, no, and I, I, that's not a dig at anything. I just, I feel like there hasn't been a really big find in a while. Oh, so, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if there will be another one. There will. There will like something the size of like a like a like will will we ever discover a new cat? The problem oh, is too sweet. many too many people are spending time like delineating species. Like I was saying, I mean, like they didn't they just they did like within the last year they just delineated a new species of sloth just because it lives on a different island. Basically, really, right. so, like people are spending time doing that as opposed to like going out and looking for new stuff because looking for new stuff is really really hard. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to go to places that are that basically you can't get to. It's hard. Easily. It's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you guys heard about this. It's It's been in talks with the Catalina Island Conservancy, California, uh, DFW, Department of Fish and Wildlife, for a while. There are a bunch of deer yep. on Catalina Island. Okay, but, They were put yeah. there. They're not native. They were put there. They're, they're, right. they're deer from the mainland that were put onto the island. Why? Do you know why they were originally put there? I think there? they were farmed there. Okay, It's not like the bison. The bison oh, were yeah. put there. For a, movie. Uh, for a movie, for a movie, and then yeah. they just got left behind. But I think the deer were brought <laughs> out. Uh, I don't know, but they're they're brought out for something. Okay. But um, anyway, they've been there a long time. You see them like cruising around. Like if you're in Avalon, they'll just be like a deer walking down the street. Sometimes you're like, gotcha. oh, that's kind of cool. Are these whitetail? No, they're mule deer. They're right? mule deer. Okay. Mule deer, yeah. This is going to be the next fucking Florida dude with invasive species. Yeah, it's yeah, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so the Island Conservancy has plans to call two thousand deer. Uh, to knock it down because the deer are destroying native plants. They're devastating. Uh, you know, the droughts are devastating their herds. The wildfires are, are becoming an issue because of the erosion from the deer feet. Like, it's just a whole mess of stuff. So um, the island is actually putting a mandate out to allow hunters to come in and spend money, which is actually good, to call the deer 
uh, down, you know, to 2,000, to bring yeah. 2,000 down. Well, um, how many are there, or like, does that mean that there's like 20,000 there? Or? I don't know. I don't know what the whole population is, but I know what they did on Santa Cruz and Santa Rosa and those other islands, which I've talked about I was a part of. Uh, they're also planning on basically if the hunters don't succeed in the right amount of time, they're going to do the same thing they did for the pigs on Santa Cruz, which is bring in helicopters and sharpshooters yeah. and then just take them out by the, from the air. So, um, wow. Yeah. It's dude. It's so interesting because Catalina is just such a small little rock right off like the edge. You go there. 26 to, miles. It's not that tiny. Well, I mean, when you go there, there's only one kind of spot to go. And I feel like all the houses are made for little people. <laughs> Have you ever been there? There's like oh, the, yeah. there's small cars and like golf carts yeah. and houses that are shorter than a normal house. There are a lot of little houses. There's a couple freaking mansions there too. Oh but yeah. yeah. No, I mean like Avalon. The king of the island. There's two towns, right? There's there's Avalon and there's two harbors. Um, and Avalon's like the the city, if you will, which is super fun. Where the know. ferry goes, right? It goes to both. But oh yeah, but uh, two harbors is literally one store, one restaurant, like a three bedroom Airbnb type thing. Yeah. And a campground. Right. And then Avalon is the like there's like twenty bars or so, yeah. a bunch of restaurants, great Little karaoke. Town. Yeah, it's it's Fratalina. Great yeah, karaoke. Totally. There's yeah. a mini golf. What's the drink that it's like called like a buffalo milk? Buffalo milk. What yeah. is I, I I have not ordered it because it has the word semen, milk in it. it. Huh, it's it's bovine semen. Yeah, that's right. No, what um, is in a buffalo milk? I think it's like a white Russian. I don't know what it is, but when you're there, you drink nine of them and then throw up like a curdle. I, I saw God. people drinking these at this bar, and it's like a 20-ounce thing of like frothy, milky booze. Yeah, it's got like coconut, banana, Kahlua. It's delightful. It's, you know- it's the, really nice. You can't. It's such like- Having those drinks, they have one in Vegas too. It's like a half giant fucking- like, oh, the like the vuvuzela yeah. filled with booze. Yeah, I, like I don't get it. You can't. You, if you drink that, you're literally blacked out. What else are you doing? You're stuck on an island. Don't you think the cops get pissed, dude? Have you seen cops in Catalina? No, it's I the haven't. most laid back. <laughs> By the way, listen. If you're from California, if you're not from California, go to Fratellina for a weekend. Okay. because it's just like. It's it's like another country, by the way. You just like you boat out there, and you're like, "Wow, I'm in the Mediterranean." Yeah, there's still all the amenities. It's heinously expensive. Yeah, Um, and then you can just drink whatever you like. You could sleep on the street. Nobody cares. (laughs) Like everybody's friendly. Like it's just a mess. Like you're just like, "What is going on over here?" Let me let me. And then you come back to reality on a boat ride. You're like, "Oh, I'm back in hungover as shit." Yeah, it's great. Across the Pacific. All right. Well, it's Monday. Monday night football tonight. I'm gonna watch. Yeah, baby. Raiders. I'm going to watch. Lions. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody on my fantasy team going, I need to do something to make it a little more interesting. So I'm going to do prize picks. Prize picks is the most fun I've had, winning up to 25 times my money this football season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. It's a really simple way to play. You make your picks and you submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Uh, I'm going to give you my pick for tonight. I'm going Jared Goff, more than 252.5 passing yards. Peter, what's your prize pick? Listen, uh, I'm going Amon Ra St. Brown, because I like his name, A. Uh, More than 79 and a half receiving yards. Kind of piggybacking off me, you know? If Goff has a lot of passing yards, then uh, St. Brown is going to have to be pretty active. Look, if you want to have fun, See, see what happens. Go to prizepicks.com slash wild and use code wild for a first deposit match up to $100. Hey guys, if you're enjoying, whoops, guys, if you like the wild times, check us out on Patreon. We put out four extra podcasts per month. That's one commute a week that you're just going to be laughing and learning the whole time in the car. <laughs> hey, let me do, do something else. This is the late night content. The stuff that we, we can't show on, on YouTube because they'll kick us off YouTube. It's the Cinemax of podcasts. <laughs> Uncensored, raw dog. It's the Cinemax of podcasts. Check it out. Link right here. So they want to bring in sharpshooters to get them on choppers. Mm-hmm. Where, do you, where do you find a team of sharpshooters? Do you call like the, the, the army? Like- New Zealand. What? Yeah. You know why? 
Why? Mm-hmm. Because in New Zealand, they have invasive red stag that were brought in for hunting. Of course. And because they live on the South Island where there's all these crazy fjords and like impenetrable habitat, the way that you go red stag hunting in New Zealand, or one of the ways, is you do this like, super expensive helicopter charter. So okay. the guys there that run it, like imagine you're a hunting guide and for 20 years, three times a week, all you do is fly around in these tiny little fjords and shoot deer out of a helicopter. You're the world's leading expert at it. Yeah, it's like it's like instead of having to play video games to be good at that shit, they actually get real life experience doing this shit. It's so bonkers frustrating too. Like when I was working on the islands and we were doing so much lame stuff, or counting ants and rats <laughs> and all the fucking weed. Counting ants. And then they're like, All right, we're gonna get rid of these pigs. I was like, Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're gonna shoot them out of helicopters. Like, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> and here come the guys that are gonna do it. And I was like, Oh yeah. Oh. I would I would pay anything to have been there to see you get so these like, like got it. cool they they fly in a charter flight from Auckland, these like cool dudes in like jumpsuits get Dude, out. Dude, they helicopter in. They look like something out of Top Gun. They got the aviators <laughs> flinging their leather jackets over their shoulder, carrying their rifle cases, uh, and you're like, douchebags. Yeah, but you're like, they're so cool. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like, and you're like us- sitting there in your hazmat suit, like spraying weed. <laughs> like, hey. You have like a, one of those weed spraying packs on the back. Not, when you counted ants, did work. you have a little clicker? Sure. Did. Like, yep. Wait, wait, CNN. wait! I thought that that was just an exaggerated or an exaggeration joke. No, no, you counted I, millions ants. Millions of ants. Millions. How I long were you counting Jesus ants? Christ. For? Four months. Dude, get into biology, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's super uh, fun. You'll love it. Yeah. yeah. Now, okay. If, That's how they weed out the weak that aren't actually passionate about this science. Dude. I'm also weak, and I still made it through. So it not just yeah. You it's are terrible. weak. Yeah, it's awful. weak. Anyway, yeah, that'll be good. It'll be good when they knock that deer population down. When I was cruising around the Everglades last week, uh, the one of the guys who was just like part of like the kind of like the airboat crews that uh-huh. were, were were helping us was was a botanist. That okay. was his thing. Familiar and like botany boy, just was getting. How boring sp- was this guy though? As a person, I, I I liked him as a person, but man, he would just like get really excited about like you know we're pulling like 10 foot gators up onto the boats and stuff like that and he's he's and he'd be like oh yeah I gotta, I gotta show you something and it would just be like it some leaf dick. yeah <laughs> what's that shows you his dick yeah, <laughs> yeah. i was like yeah, i've said this I'd before be. it's gonna upset some people biology or sorry uh, geologists and botanists there's Ooh, snooze. I disagree, man. There's snooze. I love geo. I I can talk to geologists all day. I there's, find it fascinating. There's a crazy ass geologist on this past season of Love Is Blind. We should check it out. She's the might be the craziest one on the entire season. I've never heard Peter reference a masculine show. No, I watched yeah. Ninety Day Fiance, which there are forty versions of, and Love Is Blind. What do you think the creator of Ninety Day Fiance has made monetarily? Billion dollars, twenty five million, more really? than that, yeah. because he he also does like a bunch of other shows too. Yeah, I'm him. taking that into account. See, I like like my buddy Eric Drummond is a is a geologist, and okay. like just doing being outdoors with him, we're just like, what's going on over there? And he just you can they can just look at sh- shit and tell you how it formed. How it formed you did go up to the from. geologist at Animal Con, and you were like, you struck up a real. That was your longest conversation out of everything there. Was you did talking you to the it? geologist? He was just like. <laughs> He was under that's the fucking table. Like. I know. That's what it sounded yeah, like the yeah. whole time. I, yeah. find, I find it very interesting. <laughs> Whoop. Dude, uh, by the way, good way to make a lot of money, too. Being what? a geologist? Oh, because they co- they take, basically, they'll take, like, a two-year or, like, a four-year contract to, to go look for oil. Mm. Oh. And then they're like, okay, now I'm rich, and I can just, like, do, like, the fun stuff <laughs> now I Now I can do. play with pebbles for yeah. a living. Yeah. <laughs> right. I thought you were going to say because they go out and they, like, find valuable minerals. But nope, just oil. Yeah. Dinosaur yeah, yeah. bones all, is yep. It's Dinosaur all about bones oil. Dinosaur bones is oil. All right, so last pod, two weeks ago, we started... We announced the contest. Yes. Outdoor moments. Outdoor moments. Brought to you by Leatherman. That's right. Uh, submissions are coming in. Some good ones so far. You can um, win the coolest. Uh, it's hands down the best Leatherman product. You're that's obsessed ever been made. with this. You've thing. been raving about this yeah, before we even knew about well, the tool. <laughs> I'm lucky because Billy at Leatherman's a good buddy, and he sent me one of these before they came out. I don't think you understand. Oh, it's like a switchblade, dude. Here's my lefty. Not touching it. I don't know if you've ever used like a generic. I have. Tool. It takes. Brute strength Five hands to, to open the shit. Out. Like, this yeah. is unbelievable. Like, Dude, the that's magnets, crazy. The fact that you can do everything one handed. I mean, the knives, as always, are super sharp. It's made from the best materials. Look, I mean, it's not like this isn't 
an endorsement type thing, but I'm just telling you, regardless of what it is, I would never not have this tool on me ever again. So I have one in my truck right now. I swear to God, I can go can get I it have and one? show you. It's the best <laughs> tool that's ever been made. All right. So if you want to win the Leatherman brand new Leatherman Arc, twenty one different tools in one. By the way, if that's... you want to win one, in the in the comments of the pod, of course, are you picking, picking a your nose hair? hair? Oh! Didn't, didn't know you could use it for oh, that. Whole new showing use. You, 26 I'm tools. showing you all the uses that it has. <laughs> Enter the Outdoor Moments Contest. So here's the challenge, in case you missed last week or haven't done it yet. Submit your favorite outdoor moment. Yep. Tell a story, but five sentences. And, and I think we're going to ding you if you do, like, 15 commas in a sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take it easy. No run-ons. Tell, tell us the your Proper favorite ground. outdoor moment of your life yep. in... Five sentences. Uh, in a few weeks, we will announce the three finalists. Yep. And then we will announce the winner in time for the holidays. You will be shipped one of these dope-ass Leatherman arcs. Not one that I put up my nose. You'll get a fresh. A one. clean one in yeah. the box. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so as part of this, for us, last week we did the number three yep. outdoor moment. Yep. We're doing the countdown. What is your number two outdoor moment? Number two outdoor moment for me. One where we're and all together, right? Yeah, and I'm going to challenge you to do this in five sentences since that's what the grocery oh, oh, he can't do okay. that. I can. All right. I Brevity, can. not his thing. I'll be the judge. Okay. All right. I'm just thinking. Yeah, it's crazy. okay. We'll put an yeah. edit here. Paint, pa okay. paint us a picture. Yeah, in five sentences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no AI to help you. I'm keeping mine Leatherman-centric because everybody knows otherwise I'm just going to talk about tortoises and leopards and whatnot. <laughs> so okay. I'm keeping mine Leatherman-centric. Okay. When we all went to Anza... Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And my dog ran through the jumping cacti, yeah. and I had to pull the jumping choya out of his nutsack with the Leatherman. <laughs> that was one. That? Of, that was your number two favorite moment. I mean, it, I, I'm keeping it Leatherman centric. Kyle filmed it. Kyle, you remember filming that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll put that up. Actually, you'll see me pulling pulling the the thorns out of my do dog's nutsack. That so, was uh, that's yeah. My, that's my second favorite Leatherman moment. Now here's the thing: had you had your arm broken, you wouldn't have been able to do it back then. But no, now, but now, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I could have been in a sling. Still save my dog's nuts. Yeah, I'm. I, by the way, we're gonna read some of the uh, Brosner's outdoor moment stories. A lot of a lot of the people who uh, watch and listen to this pod do some pretty cool, interesting stuff out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. This gonna be it's gonna be a tough. Conversation. And by the way, yeah. your story does not have to have anything to do with a multi tool. It's just, no, I'm just your favorite that. story. Yeah, I'm just doing that. Um, because why not? It's fun to have a contest and a giveaway. It's great. I like it. It's great. You Real listen fun. to a podcast, you might get something free that's really cool. That makes it more fun for everybody. And me, because I get to play with the Leatherman the whole time. I mean, you yeah. genuinely love this fucking multi-tool. Yes, I've said it. I've said it, and I mean it. I, I put it on my Instagram. This thing's insane. Here, grab it. Oh, uh, dude, can I keep it? No. Ooh. Yeah, you can keep that one. I, I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, <we> so, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, that's good. Outdoor Moments brought to you by Leatherman. Sweet. Thank Done. you, Leatherman. Good. Keep submitting yours, and we're going to read some of them out and pick a winner in the next few weeks. Absolutely. You guys, All right, let's play a game. All right, what do we got? I love we play games. A game? yes. I really like. I them. love games. B a o t w. Bizarre animal of the week. I <laughs> would have never go. figured that out. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I said it quick. B o a t w. Um, you got right. something truly bizarre? Yeah, I do. All right, you ready? Yeah, I was born ready, baby. I've okay. never, by the way, neither of us have ever gotten it. I know. Okay. It's not going to change today. I'm That's very not true. I've gotten it. Which is annoying because when we've done them on the lives, the Brosners get them on like the fourth clue. Uh, it, at least, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Let's uh, I do think it. Edwin's cheating and texting all the brosners what the is. answer is. All right. So this bizarre animal of the week resides in the deep, dark depths of the ocean. Anglerfish. Uh, yes. Uh, what? I don't know. Peter, name one deep sea creature. Uh, dude, uh, what's the ugly one? The blowfish. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anglerfish. Blowfish. Yeah. Blowfish. Right. I got a shirt okay. with him on it. <laughs> in the darkest of waters in the deep sea, okay. where there is no light. This animal produces light through photophores along its belly and fins. Along its belly, belly and fins, so it's not an angler no. fish. No. It really also has fish. a belly and fins, so it's like, it's, it's not, not one of those weird ass. It's not a deep sea ape. Yeah. No, okay. It doesn't exist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that thing with the bulb on its head. Okay. Its bioluminescence serves a specific purpose in its natural habitat, and here's what it does. It aids it in communication. Oh, right, so, so it like it does like sonar, but with light or something like blinks. Strobing effect. Morse code. Oh, a a strobing Morse effect. Morse code okay. in light right. terms. Also, uses that as camouflage. 
So it, 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 it communicates and makes itself noticeable by it, and it also uses it as camouflage. That's right. Huh. Yeah, you know when it's really dark and someone shines a light in your eyes? Ah. You know, maybe it's that kind flash of thing. Flashbang, flash okay. grenade. Okay. Right. Okay. I got uh, two more clues. Do you want to take a guess at all, Pat? I, I don't know right now. I, have I thought no it was going to be an anglerfish. <laughs> I, I do have, no, I don't. I, okay. I only know of one other deep sea creature, and that's what I'm going to guess. So What is it? Uh, squid? No. Uh, it's the shark know, that but... lives 500 years, the Greenland shark. It's a good guess. And to combat that, I'll tell you that this long streamlined animal is only a few inches long. Cookie cutter so, shark. Good guess. But I mean, I don't know. Just guess something. Just uh, say something uh, giant listen. squid. Close. All right. So <laughs> this week's bizarre animal. Of, it's this big. Yeah. Giant squid. Wait, there's two more clues, isn't there? Or did yeah. you give them? Um, okay. So let's recap. Yep. Our bizarre animal of the week is bioluminescent. Um, it lives in the deep, dark ocean. Yes. It has a long, streamlined body, but is only six inches long. And it has these... Six inches long. About six inches long. And it has these lights on its belly and fins. That it uses for camouflage and communication. Dude. Now you want me to throw a real ringer at you? Yeah. Absolutely. It's a shark. Well... Well, at least I got that part right. I said cookie cutter shark. I don't believe they have bioluminescence, so that was a bad guess. Uh, um, the goblin a shark that one? Bio- so ugly. I, I assume it's in the deep sea. Yeah, goblin shark. No, they don't have bio. These are good guesses. I'm curious if any brosners got it. We are bizarre animal of the week this week. Yeah, yeah. Is the dwarf lantern shark? Take a look at this. Ah, Never heard of it. Lantern. Let's yep. see this thing. You get where it gets the name dwarf. It's only six inches long. Lantern because it glows. Look at this little sucker. It's the cutest wow. shark I've ever seen. And it glows Beautiful. in the dark. And it has speckles on its belly and its fin and it bioluminesces. Well, let uh, me ask you a ba- question. Basically, it's a sardine with a shark's face. Well, I was going to say. It's a sardine shark. Hold it's on. It's a deep sea sardine shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold, hold on. So it looks like that out of the water. I'm assuming when it's actually down in the pressure that it lives at. That's what it looks it, like. It, that's okay. It looks it, like a beautiful a, tetra. Yeah, that's good for you for knowing what a tetra is. I had him when I was young. I'm going to buy you a fish tank. Oh, Kyle just got a fish tank. I saw. That's why he was late today. Yeah, he was tending to his discus. (laughs) Um, Wow, that was, I I would have never guessed that, but I got to say. Do you know why I thought of this? Why? Because my son was watching Octonauts. Do you guys know Octonauts yet? Are your kids at Octonauts? I've heard of it. I've not watched it. Tremendous, by the way. Very educational. Octonauts. Octonauts. Delightful show. Okay. And they were doing a feature on the dwarf lantern shark. I was like, wow. Nice. It's a great bizarre animal of the week. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Never heard of it. Pretty cool. Will this be your next Shark Week? Is it your spirit animal? Yeah. yeah. Really easy to sell a sell a Shark Week show <laughs> on a on a fish. This you know, big. you're one of the only people who's managed to sell some smaller shark uh, shark weeks. That's true. Weeks. That's very true. No, so. I don't think I'm getting away with this one, unfortunately. <sighs> be so cool. How deep? Send down a box trap. It's like this big. Kyle, how deep do they live? These dwarf lantern sharks. I mean, That's like we're talking thousands of feet. Yeah. yeah what do you for think, sure, Forrest? For sure. What oh, what I'm is considered deep like, sea? Before we see it, I'm going to say they're like 700 feet down. Seven seven hundred plus. Oh, there we go. Nine hundred and twenty-eight down. That doesn't feel thousand like deep sea to down. me. Seven hundred doesn't feel like deep sea. I feel like Bro, it's gonna be thousands. I don't think you know how far a thousand feet is. I said yeah. seven hundred. Yeah, okay, picture, fine, picture an eighty-story tall. The Empire State's buildings a l- is a little over a thousand feet. Okay, I guess yeah. So imagine What's going a mile? that far down. But it's the pressure down. and the depth, and there's no light down there. Like it's insane. Yeah, yeah. it's one thing to jump a thousand feet or go a thousand feet up a mountain. Going down a thousand <laughs> feet in water. And like, you said you said free diving you can only go about 150. Well, me. 120. No, no, other I mean people can go much deeper. No, oh, they're, they're what's the max? Dive, Herbert Niche did 600 and look what? Like Kyle, 640 feet. Herbert That's Niche crazy. Free, dive, free dive? Yeah. How does he? Didn't his head explode? I mean, what no, the but hell? his whole body was like a third the size that it normally is, basically, because everything compresses. So oh much. my goodness! Well, the water doesn't, but that, like the lungs and all the air. Good. It's like, no, no. Apparently, it's. T- yeah, but what's Nine minute Herbert, depth Herbert breath Herbert hold. Niche, I think it's six hundred and seven hundred and two feet. That is, is like that being record? on a different planet. Yes, that's crazy. That's where those fucking lantern sharks. Now are. they he do that with the far. with the aid totally. of a line, right? Yeah. That, that so they have, they have a line, and then there's a bunch of different variations. There's unassisted, which is just down and up. There's a sled that can pull you down. Yeah. There's a one way sled where you go down and it just pulls you back up. There's like a bunch of different gotcha. variations. Yeah. So I was just uh, a buddy of mine. Um, who does some of the same types of stuff you do, and he was telling me about it. Not as handsome. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, he's a one. No, 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 no. two. <laughs> but um, he, he recently did something where they went down in a submersible. Sick. And uh, 
showed me some pictures and it's you know you're basically like kind of like laying down on your elbows it's yeah. it's fucking cramped in there oh it's terrible yeah so it's him a camera guy and the um pilot uh-huh and she's like giving them the safety briefing and whatever and they they have like their little emergency kit mm -hmm. and uh the emergency kit is <laughs> packed it's got like it's got some food in it yeah uh -huh. and then a fuckload of Xanax oh yeah yeah that adds up and it, and it's like they they do that because if something goes wrong and they like lose their line or whatever, chill. It's so that everyone will just relax and breathe less air and like get real dosed up on uh, the anti anxiety Dude, it's, stuff. It's a good way to die too. If you're just like, it's hey, better it than be not helpful. having it. That's yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. If you're if you're gonna croak in a sub, give me nine bar of Xanax immediately. I feel like, and I'm just like, ha, ha, that's nine fun. bars. Yeah. <laughs> if they were like, no, we got room for a producer, hop in. They would just like be doing their stuff and they'd be like. What are you eating? Chips back there? Or just <laughs> Xanax powder all over my Snorting beard. Xanax. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, this has been a good look. I, I'm very excited about this contest. I feel like it's fun. The engagement is high. Yeah, we're I'm enjoying it. Right before Christmas, we'll we'll be able to announce our winner. Yep. Even for Make somebody who isn't as outdoorsy as these two outdoorsmen. That fucking Leatherman knife is dope. Dude, it's so spicy. I was Kyle tool. Camera Guy tool. So solid. Dude. Yeah. I, I, I will not. I don't know, if Patrick, you enforce the same thing. If a camera guy doesn't have a Leatherman on them on set, I'm, <laughs> oh. I, I'm not joking. Like, I won't let no, them. You, you laugh so, them out of the room. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah you're not work, serious. If you want to work on a gig with Forrest, you must have a Leatherman <laughs> yeah. in your pocket. I, if, Kyle, am I joking? Weigh in. Do I not scream at you guys if you don't have a Leatherman on you at Where's all times? Where's your fucking Leatherman? Ah, ah. Yeah, I'm dead serious about it. I'm dead serious about it. Oh, anyway, shit. I think this has been a good one. Been fun. Submit your outdoor moments. Five sentences, not six. All right, so you guys strike me as active fellas. Yep. Yeah, I would even call you doers, people that go out and do <laughs> something. Your thoughts? Yes. Yeah, and that's why I just got a really sweet pair of adventure pants. I'm not kidding, from a company called Doer. And they are lightweight, they're breathable, they're made from wood chips, plants, and recycled materials, which is incredible, obviously, all things that I believe in and stand for. And, um, you know, they've got nice pockets, nice fit, they're comfortable enough to wear all day long, I can wear them on a plane, I can wear them on an adventure, I can wear them to a meeting, and uh, honestly, they're the, probably the best pair of pants I've ever had. Yeah, no shit. And if you're, yeah. if you're like me, who's not a doer, you can still enjoy these pants and because they're, you know what? They're stretchy jeans, okay? So after yeah. I have a big old meal, I don't have to unbutton anymore because these pants <laughs> are so comfortable. No joke. You're, yeah. you're in a bulk phase right now, right, Peter? That's what it is? End of the year bulk phase. Yeah, that's, that's right. smart. Look, we all know you'll love Dewar just as much as we do. You need to order your own pair. You could uh, check out Dewar's flagship stores in LA and Denver or shop online at shopdewar.com slash wild. Right now, our listeners can get 15% off site-wide, by the way, uh, when you use the special URL. You're going to want to take advantage of this because Doer never goes on sale. This is a very special opportunity just for our listeners. So check it out. You're not going to want to miss it. That's 15% off now if you go to shop Doer, D-U-E-R dot com slash wild. Dude, What's I, my game? Uh, oh, a sorry. producer that I, that I worked with, he sent me like a like a 15 minute thing he made. He went to Lima, Peru and he was just doing like, he was just documenting um, like crime there, you okay. know? And so he like embedded with a few different people, but one of them was like this 15 year old kid who lived with his mom. His mom knew what he was doing and this is how they supported the family. Mm. And what he would do is he would just, so Lima, Peru is, you know, there's 12 million people there. Right? It's a huge, huge city. densely yeah. populated city. And him and a buddy, he had a buddy who would stand down the street, um, you know, within, within visual contact. Right. And so the buddy would look for cars where the person was holding their cell phone in a way that was conducive for him to reach into through the window because hmm. there's less cars with air conditioning. Right. Right. So, and so are open. his buddy would signal him the car, like someone's on their phone, right. The passengers texting or whatever looking at their phone mm -hmm. and this guy would just wait for the car to come up traffic's moving at a snail pace and just was really good at just going boom and then they would take off they had a, a whole alley plan that they would run down nobody could find him and yeah. he would get like 20 phones a day and then he would take them to a place and sell the phones and that's how the 15 year old son supported his his little sister and his mom that's the sad thing is that there's that that is often the derivative behind it right 
Um, yeah, there was I've, a lot of like, I you you watch it, and I wasn't like, I hate this kid. You right, know, like he's doing what he can. Yeah, yeah, I hate him. I've told you about what they do. I don't think they do this anymore, but I, when I was young and we used to go to Nairobi for safari business stuff, um, what they do in Nairobi to extort, extort money out of you at stoplights. Would it? No, you haven't told, told us. You this? No. So the, the street kids will, uh, they'll shit in their hands in Nairobi. Oh, God. And when you stop at a stoplight, if you have your light down, they'll hold the shit in the window and put their other hand out. And if you don't put money in their hand, they just throw it on your lap. What do you mean if you have your light down? Your window down. If you stop at a stoplight and you have your window down. Oh, I don't know what he I misspoke. Said. That's what I meant. Okay. Um, sorry. But yeah, that was how, and it was like a known thing. It was like, do not have your windows down in the city. Cause you know, it's hot. Nobody has air conditioning back then. Yeah. And it was like everybody drive around and, you know, open land cruisers and stuff. And these street kids would run up with little human shit in their hand and put their hand out. And you'd have to quickly scramble to put money in their hand before they threw shit on your lap. What if you just, what if you just took your machete and chopped their fucking hand off? Then you'd have shit and blood on your lap. That's not true, but I'd yeah. still feel better about the situation. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, speaking of all these let's international cities around the world, Kyle, why don't you pop on screen? Let's make this a three way game. Oh, he's fucked. So, you know, Nothing we talk good. a lot about travel. <laughs> travel yeah, can ahead. be, you can, you can travel to go on a hike. You can travel to go see bears. You can go catch gators oh, in the Everglades. Look how yeah, flustered he, was. he looks. He was definitely just masturbating. <laughs> he was. I can see him in the, in the, with my he special was ma- admin He was powers. masturbating. Yeah. That's right. He's very sweaty. So <laughs> sweaty. Hands Sorry. Are you having a sneaky beat? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the urban dictionary just got me flustered. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Patrick. Right. I, I killed your diatribe there. All right. Well, you know, how much do, how much do the Wild Times hosts really know about, about travel? Oh, about the world we live in zero <laughs> so we're gonna do a little we're gonna do a little game here so what i have in front of me is the most recent uh, united nations population estimates of the okay. biggest cities in the world no cheating here oh wow mm-hmm. okay all right mm-hmm. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around we're gonna start with kyle yep okay. name what name a city and then based on where it ranks you get that many points Gotcha. Okay. It's based right. on population, not like density. Yeah. What are the largest cities in the world as of 2020? I'm going to guess it has to be somewhere in probably India. Nope. Or- you have to name the city. Okay. So. All right. All right. Um, I don't even know any Delhi. cities. Kyle comes in hot with Delhi. That is the number two uh, highest population city in the world. Okay. 28.5 million people. I, I I'm going next. Gonna- I'm going okay, next. Go Go Wait, ahead. Forrest, what were you going to say? I was going to say Delhi as well, but go go ahead, Peter. You Kyle gets 28.5 points. Yeah. Okay. So this is the highest population density? Yeah. No, no, no. Just oh, total city population. population oh, world. shit. Okay. Delhi is the second biggest city in the world. I'll just say uh, Shanghai. That is number three. That's ah, a great guess. Okay. 25.6 million people in Shanghai. I'm going to say Beijing then. Oh. Beijing is number eight. Okay. Also yeah, I in know. China. I, I thought it was Delhi. I thought that was like a known thing that Delhi so was the number one. we still don't have number one. Forrest, you get 19.6 points for that. <laughs> okay. It's not great. Um, you could make it up on your next guess. Uh, since Kyle went first, we're going reverse order. Forrest, what's your second guess? Uh, okay. S- still missing number one. Mumbai. Four, Mumbai. That's number seven, also in India. Wow. 20 million people. Forrest gets 20 points. Yeah. Shit. Peter? Uh, listen, I don't know many worldwide cities. I'm just going to go because I know it's somewhere on there. Mm, Los Angeles. Let me just scroll way down. That's number 23. With I'll take it. 12.5 <gasps> million people. I know people. what it might be. I think Hang I know on. what it is. So okay. let me say something here. Yeah. Delhi was number two. The number one city has almost 10 million more people than Delhi. And, and they're both in India, estimated. by the way. I think I know what it is. Kyle. Kyle, go. Wait, I thought two. you already got it. I thought, it, oh no, that was number oh, one. Man, Mumbai. I, mean, I, I think I know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to throw out Tokyo. That is correct. No way! Oh, that shit. was going to be my oh, that first wasn't my guess. Next guess. That was not my next guess. I, Tokyo is a fucking island. I thought you were, that's why I asked about population density because I was like, okay, I it's know Tokyo has. Shut up. F off. <laughs> Tokyo is the largest city in the world. Wow. How many people? 
Thirty-seven point five million people. I'm in Tokyo. so angry with Crazy. myself. Wow. Man. Wait. That's well, too- wait. I, I still want to see where my next guest ranks. Yeah, it's not over. You each get okay. one more. Got and it. And we'll see who gets the most oh, points. Got it. Okay. So Peter's up next. No, Kyle's up for his, going his, again. his last okay. guess. Yeah. Um. Wait. Didn't he oh. just get it? Oh, I see. Yep. Sorry. Duh. Uh. Wow. Okay. Um. <laughs> He's gonna have to really bomb this because he got the number one yeah. and number two. Yeah. It's uh. Uh, New York, somewhere in there. No way. That's it's a pretty good guess. That's actually number eleven no way. with eighteen point eight million people. Okay, Peter, my turn. Shit, dude. <sighs> Still got number four, number five, number six. I'm very number curious nine. what because I thought my next one was going to be number oh. one, so I want to see where it ranks. So angry about Tokyo. <laughs> I'll go Manila, Philippines. Manila, Philippines. That's a great guess. Now, while it is number one by far in population density, it's only number 17 mm. total with 13.5 million people. Mm-hmm. Good guess. Yeah. How about Jakarta? That was my next guess. Let me see, Jakarta. I'm going to scroll on this it's one. It's not even it's... on the list. <laughs> really? Oh, uh, it's number 30, 10.5 Really? Million. Jakarta, Indonesia. Wow. 10.5? No way. It's like it gargantuan. Now, what you've been there for us, so... Was it the density or the size of the city that made you think it would be up there? I just thought it was definitely in the top like two or three of most populated cities. I mean, it's just like it's similar to well, I haven't been to Tokyo, but similar to the other cities that we've named in the sense of there's just people everywhere. Kyle, wise, yeah. Kyle, when we're done with the game and you're off screen again, go ahead and fact check this because I think I think <laughs> Pat's got his numbers wrong. Uh, <laughs> check. That's always fun to do. Um, no, I'm looking at based well, on the, the brosters are all going to do it for him if he doesn't. So to Fora's point, Jakarta, the population density is more than double Tokyo, but the land area is less than a quarter of Tokyo. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. All right. Well, I'm, I'm not good at this game. Uh, so number four. <laughs> so you guys got one, two, three, which is Tokyo, Delhi, Shanghai. Number four is Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oh, wow. Mm. Then Sao Mexico Paulo. City. Cairo is number six in Egypt. Wow. Oh, really? I didn't know Cairo was that big. Yep. And then Mumbai, what you got? Beijing. Number nine was Dhaka in Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. And then 10, Osaka. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Japan's got a lot of people. And it's tiny, isn't it? Yeah. Dude, Manila is like 60% higher than the second most dense population. Wow. It's there's 42,000 people per square kilometer. Oh my God. That's how oh, that's crazy. It's a vertical city. Yeah. yeah. Well, dude, I've, I've watched, uh, on, on a 90 day fiance. Sometimes they'll, they'll be see, dating someone or engage with somebody in over there in the Philippines. And they, they live. It's like, I mean, what's that movie where they show all of the houses, like the slums in slum dog millionaire or whatever. It's uh, it's like that in the Philippines. And the, the, when I was watching the last season, this Filipino woman's mom died while they were shooting because she fell down their makeshift stairs <laughs> and like their, their roof is like just a towel over some plywood. It's ludicrous, man. You're, you ask how they do it. It's just all like packed in there like sardines and not real actual like housing units. Wow. Yeah, I mean, insane. It's Gross. crazy to think. So, if you if you do square mi- if you translate that square miles or square kilometers to square miles, because we understand miles in the U.S. and not <laughs> right. kilometers very well, that's one hundred and eight thousand people per square mile. Wow, dude. So that's like fifteen times the population density of I, L.A. I don't understand. Like, why do you reproduce at that point? <laughs> I wouldn't like, I, and I, I, wouldn't. I don't mean that to be, you know, racist or whatever, but like if you're living in a slum and your life's pretty hellish and you have no space and there's a hundred thousand people on top and beside you, why not be like, all right, I can't bring children into this world in a nice capacity. They're not going to make things better. You know, like why reproduce? And, and, and I know some people would be like, oh, they don't have a choice. They do have a choice. You know what I mean? Like condoms cost 10 cents everywhere in the world. Um, like, or whatever. I but like why? Like, what is the point of reproduction when you're living in that 
I debated not having kids in my house because it's a two bedroom. Like why? <laughs> like why do that? You know, like I just don't. I, I honestly, I. I honestly think, dude, that you know, without the education of well educated places or whatever, that just the instinctual sexual drive to reproduce in humans just takes over. I mean, yeah, you know, and then they get pregnant because they whatever they they couldn't contain themselves. So, Maybe rape, dude. Legit, as terrible as it yeah. sounds, like sexual but, but assault. Not, not millions of people. True, true. But yes, I hear what you're saying. It just, I don't know. It just seems so crazy. It's like it does. Try and better your situation before bringing other people that are also going to be miserable into the world. Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, even even with my current kids, I'm like, what have I done? Like, <laughs> this place is going to hell by 2015. Yeah, Nobody can true. buy a house. I suppose, jobs, I suppose if, if people from a hundred years look now, they'd be like, why are they having children? There's so <laughs> many people like the light, world's so terrible. And we're sitting here judging others for the same thing. So anyway, <laughs> it's interesting. It is crazy to think about just packing over a hundred thousand people into a square mile. Like I, I can't even wrap my head around how you could have any, any personal space whatsoever, even when you're sleeping. Right. So just to visualize that would be, essentially just eight city blocks on four sides and fitting that a hundred and what was it? Like 108,000, 108,000 people in, in that size, dude. And it's not like there's multiple stories, maybe two stories max. It's not like these are high rises with people in them. You know, there is, um, there is something to that whole thing though, because if I'm not mistaken and Pat, you can fact check me. Japan is going through, um, like, depopulation like they're not having kids at an alarming enough at, a, at enough rate to be sus a sustained population which mm -hmm. i think there's probably like a monkey brain correlation to where it's like oh my god there's too many people you know i i don't think it's like actively choosing not to have kids but there's probably some sort of switch that's being flipped where all this generation of japanese are not having kids and I, I bet if you looked into it, I bet it would be in the cities and not out in the country, right? I bet it would be where it's so densely populated yeah. that, that your brain, your monkey brain is being switched to be like, no more people, no more people. That's interesting. And and, and it does sound like that, that that could be one of the things. Because yeah, you know how we're humans and we think we have control over every behavior we have. But then there's some things like when you get really hungry, you have no control over it. Yeah. That, that sounds like that would be one of the things, you know, right. you're just all crammed in there. What the yeah, so I mean, the, the Japan's population, yeah, they, it fell by over eight hundred thousand last year. They have the oldest population in the world, right? And the uh, fertility rate is about. So it says just to maintain their population size, they would need to have a two point one percent fertility rate, but it's at one point three. Hmm. So you're losing eight hundred thousand more people are dying than wait, being wait. born every the, year. The fertility rate is one point three percent, meaning only one point three percent of of people are fertile. That that doesn't make. Sense. I I think that's how, what percent are reproducing each. Oh, year okay. In a given year, yeah. So wow. is this a bad thing, or is it, I mean, this is probably it's a good, good thing, thing right? It's a good thing. I, it's a it's a bad thing, you know, for Japan and for the Japanese. It's a good thing globally, right? Like, yeah. if, if we were all doing this, the world would be a better place. You know what right. I mean? Like, and, right. that, and that's the problem is like, it's not all, you know, it'll just shift somewhere else. There'll be poverty, whatever. I'd let, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a good thing if it became a global thing, but it's a bad thing, you know, you know for Japan. You know what I've always found strange, dude, that the government will get all up in your business about like everything, your fucking finances, your taxes, uh, you know, but, but God forbid they issue, like you have to get, take a test to have children or something right i mean you should need a license to have kids man you, you got people who are like poor fucking wherever down south whatever they got no money living off the government having six eight kids right so, and it's like why is this allowed and then those are the people that are having the kids and then the educated people are the ones that are like nah i don't i'm not gonna have a kid till i'm 35 i'm like i'm gonna have one kid when i'm financially solid got a career yeah and so then your whole your population is being filled with these, you know, these morons who are fucking just having kids to make money off the government. Like it should not. It, it's just. I don't, it I don't think the that's country. the case in most other places, by the way. No, I no, think I'm that's talking about yeah. here. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> oh, this, this, this is a bonus, right? Yes, this is a bonus because this is not a sponsor. Have you guys tried this thing, this magic mind thing? <laughs> no, I just bought these. This is not like me trying to plug something. And it's like, uh, Patrick, and no, you, you let and me I, see it. Let me see it. 
Is that the on it thing? No, it's something else. I've tried the okay. on it ones. You and I both tried them. They made you feel queasy. Yeah, um, I did not feel good. Yeah, this is boost energy and focus, crush procrastination, blah, blah, blah. It's got 12 ingredients. I don't really know what it is. It's like it's like a chaga mushroom and a few other things. Dude, I've stopped drinking coffee in the morning, and I'm just having one of these. I've, this is my third day, so check back with me in a week. But um, <laughs> they, this is the third day I've had one. I just I randomly just bought a little box of them. They're amazing. I feel oh, yeah? so like alert and they taste good and I don't know what's in them. Green tea and mushrooms and a passion fruit and a bunch of other weird stuff. Yeah. Try, try them out, Peter, especially for you who's struggling in the mornings with the kids stuff. Cause that's mm -hmm. why I bought them. I was like, yeah, I just want to try something different. Cause coffee wasn't cutting it. Yeah, I like drink one of these. There's no jitters. There's no caffeine feeling. You're not like, Whoa, I'm awake. You're just like, I feel good. I feel alert. It's, I'll give yeah. it a go. Not a Dude, sponsor I or of anything, any kind. I literally not yet, bought it myself, least. but no, I'm just telling you guys like, so I've been, I realize I've been sitting here like flicking this little bottle the whole pod. So I wanted to explain what it was. Dude, I, I will try it because um, I had an experience where uh, a buddy of mine who's a trainer was like, hey, come meet me. We were just going to meet in the middle of the day. He was like, yeah, let's go to this place, Ron's Tea Garden. It's like this like it's a Chinese, you know, Eastern medicine place where you can buy all sorts of herbs and stuff. And then they have like a tea shop. And uh, he was like, yeah, he's like, so I got there. I was a little late. He, um, he was like, dude, you got to try this thing called diamond mind. It was just like a blend of different herbs and teas. That's supposed okay. to like give you like immense focus and clarity. Okay. And, uh, and I had one and I legit felt amazing. Hmm. Like I noticeably yeah. was like on, I was like up it, dude. It felt great. Same that's thing. Same thing, dude. I'm telling you, it's it's, and I, I feel much less stressed. Not that I'm a big stresser, as Peter likes to point out, but I just feel like I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I'll get to it later. Like I just, I mean, that's that's a that's not a good quality for you to have. You shouldn't be any less stressed. That's like <laughs> ludicrous, dude. Nothing will ever get done in your life except for trips and vacations. And not not true. I organized a whole rugby event in two hours in the middle. Of really? The night. Yeah. In Wait, the so middle of the night. So you just take a one, you just take a pill. It's not like a tea or anything. No, it's a drink. It's this little drink. Okay. I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you the box. No oh boy. Spending a lot of time on this bullshit. Edit. I bought this little case of them because you get a discount if you buy the case. They're next to the earthworms in my mini fridge for feeding my turtle. And you get this little green drink and it's delicious too which I wasn't expecting. So I, I think we should just say they, they are not a sponsor of the podcast. No, I just, I'm just interested because, I don't know, caffeine yeah. doesn't really do anything for me. Like Yeah, I, it doesn't work anymore for me day. either. It does I nothing. Just, I just I, exploded the box. Look what just happened. The whole bottom <laughs> fell out. They're now all over my floor. Terrible boxes. <laughs> Bad, Bad boxes. Box. Good drink. No, I'll no drink. you still drink it, right, Peter? I'll yeah, I was just going to say, dude, I'll drink like three, four cups a day. I mean, it does nothing. Sometimes it makes me even more sleepy dude no joke i like yeah. fall asleep fucking the other day i fall asleep just dozed off on the couch and i twitch knocked the coffee right on the fucking floor broke the glass <laughs> coffee everywhere i was so pissed dude try these things try it i swear to god i maybe it's just because it's a new sensation you know and i'm used to coffee and i'm numb to coffee yeah but try try just uh, buy yourself a box it's like 30 See, bucks i don't ever world. remember trying coffee and being like "Ooh, i'm awake no. Like, it's just, it was a thing that I thought I could do starting in college when I would had to do all nighters for, for finals. Cause I hadn't been to the class all year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is a thing that I've been told will keep me up. I've never experienced, like I had a coffee and was like, Ooh, now I'm ready. <laughs> have you, have you ever had a C4 or a monster or one of those things? Yeah. I've tried everything, man. That doesn't do it for you. That's not like now not I'm ready. Really. The one thing I'll say is like with five hour energy, you, you guys probably remember uh, Peter, we worked on the show together. I was doing a show that filmed at nights for uh -huh. like three years Oof. and we were just filming not, you know, every week, three, four nights a week. Yeah. You know, 4 PM to 4 AM. And I got in the habit of doing a five hour energy after lunch mm -hmm. and which, lunch was, which, at, which was a midnight, right? Which uh, 10 PM. Yeah. Or okay, you know, yeah. 11 PM. Right. And I would do that. I wouldn't feel anything, but I'd be like, Oh, I powered through. And I didn't know if it was just because I was focused or if it was the five hour. Who cares? But, Who cares? Yeah. Energy works. drinks are making a huge comeback. Not that they've ever are been they? gone, but now they're like they're selling them in coffee shops, cafes, like these special. Really? Yeah. Special blend energy drinks and trying to get, I think, tap into more 
our age market because you know it's kids who are playing video games and are yeah our uh our 30 38 year old friend who acts like he's 16 neil who drink these uh normally but now they're trying to get them like and i think they're putting more like the mushrooms cordyceps yeah that's you know that this is is. getting huge right like the the mushroom thing right now so i like it i like it a lot i'd much rather that I'd much rather drink a bunch of mushrooms and spices than a bunch of synthetic chemicals. You know, oh, dude, I good. can't drink regular energy drinks. They just make me so, like a Red Bull. No way, dude. A right. monster. Right. Kill me, man. I'll, I'll just be <laughs> jittery and have anx- body anxiety for the whole day. If you went into a restaurant, fast food ish restaurant, and one of the drink offerings was called charged lemonade, what would be what would you think it was? Lemonade with caffeine in it. What would you think, Peter? Yeah, some type of energy drink. Like like Well, the fast food chain Panera Bread is being sued <laughs> by a uh the family of a college student who went in, slugged down a couple charged lemonades. She had a heart condition, so she couldn't have caffeine and she she sat very sadly passed away. But the oh, family shit. is claiming oh, Jesus. that she uh you know, she wasn't aware that there was caffeine in it. It uh-huh. wasn't like labeled properly. You know, it is called charged lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I don't want to be harsh. The, of I'm course. sorry for the family, but that's, that's, that's come up. I would think it either has booze in it or like something adult, <laughs> uh, some libation in it. It's also got to be like everywhere, right? If they're marketing it, it's got to be like, oh, this is our charged lemonade. You know, like when you yeah. walk in, it's like when you, when you go to Taco Bell and they got the, the blue Mountain Dew, you know, it's like Baja Blast on the walls. You're like, all right. Uh, well, yeah. also, I mean, that would, I guess that's kind of interesting because that would be the equivalent of, drinking a, a six pack of Mountain Dew and then being like, yeah, I didn't know there was caffeine in it. Right. <laughs> yeah, the writing's right. too small. Right. It looks delicious by the way. Yeah, really does. Hey, Apparently it has more caffeine than four shots of espresso. So that really, be, yeah, I might go get some right after this. Hey, speaking of looking delicious, I just saw that Kyle posted the, uh, wild times episode 12.5 or whatever it was, you know, the one where we wore half our bow episode. ties. Yeah. The half yeah. episode. We look delightful. Like we are rugged, handsome very well dressed we should start doing that regularly i'm i'm for it uh people there's been some comments uh somebody did comment on that that i liked where it said pat's death stare into the camera is really scaring me (laughs) i thought i thought that that was funny because i didn't notice it and then i watched it for a little while and because you're in the middle it's like yeah whenever i'm looking in the camera whenever you're not looking at one of us it's like you're just like death staring also, I wore shorts. I think it was a big hit. I'm pretty happy about that. I was shorts I and converse with a button down. I'm looking at it as we speak. It's, That's it's right. quite nice. <laughs> yeah. I, might, I mean, I would wear that just out. That'll be my thing. Yeah, I like it. I like Dude, it that lot. is a look, Peter. I'm looking at it too. Shorts tucked in. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Crisp button down, bow tie, long hair. Also, I asked notice, about the, notice the unbuttoned, uh, unbuttoned top button. Too. You couldn't, I, the, you, he's got like the Dracula. Uh, <laughs> lapel going on my neck un- is enormous <laughs> i could not fucking i could not button that top button it wasn't possible i i'll be honest i wish i had more events to dress nicely i mean i'm sure i can make the active choice to go to things where i have to dress nicely or i could just not be such a fucking slob but it's <laughs> like every time you get dressed up you're like oh man i i feel and look great and then yeah. you like go back to wearing workout gear and t-shirts and you're like, yeah, that's just me. Just like, so much easier. Cause it's getting, so much re- easier. it's not even, th- well, it's actually not even that much easier, but you literally, for a guy, you put on a, like a, a, a wife beater shirt underneath. Yeah. You put on a dress shirt, you button it up, you put on dress pants. Like that's not that much harder than pulling sweatpants on and putting a t-shirt. No, on. but, but, and maybe it's just cause I'm not up to date on all the new stuff. It feels like you're wearing a cardboard box for and sure. That's, that's what sucks. Like when you're yeah. just like in workout gear, it's all soft and comfy and you could sit all day. Dude, trying to sit in dress pants with a button down, your top button done up, like <laughs> 20 minutes no. and I'm like, kill me. Like I feel yeah. terrible. Yeah. I've, I've gotten so fat uh, and have such love handles that all of my pants and my jeans, I basically just wear them without the top button button now. I have to get new jeans, like none of them fit. And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm too busy. I'm too tired. I hate shopping. Do and it, I just bro. haven't oh, done it. Hate shopping. And it's like, dude, I'm, I feel like such a piece of shit, man. That's why I don't wear like just dress clothes or jeans because I don't have to unbutton the sweatpants. Yeah, but you, but here's the, you, the whole time I've known you, you go in these, you go through these phases. It happens every time this time of year. 
where you just get fat, call yourself <laughs> fat, say you feel like shit. Mm-hmm. And then like January 15th, you go on a diet where you eat nothing but beans for a month. <laughs> yeah. Lose like 30 pounds and feel great. It's just how you do. And look great. Hey, thanks. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's probably not healthy, but I, yeah, there's something to be said. It, like we said about about not having kids when the population gets too thick around you. There's something to be said for the the cycle of winter coming and you wanting to get fat. And then once it comes to an end and all the holidays are over and shit, you're just like, I can't eat anything, bro. So yeah. first of all, all guys are disgusting. But the idea of sharing <laughs> a bed with any guy that's on an all bean diet. <laughs> dude i got a pretty tough stomach there wasn't even that much gas that came along with my all bean diet there's no way that's accurate you listen i got i got destroying the sheets at night <laughs> these were not your average canned beans mate i was getting these at the ethnic store they were dry i was pressure cooking them dude i had beans for days and i'm telling you because of that i don't think they, they were not making me as gassy as you would think okay hey patrick <laughs> are you yeah. seeing this thing that that kyle just put in the chat I am. This is like so up your alley. Did you scroll down to the critter? I, I'm looking at video of the critter right now. Well, let's yeah, pull it up. Pull so this up. Yeah, pull this up. This is like, I this is Atacama it. critter number two. Like, this is so, so in Patrick's wheelhouse. What? Oh, my God. What is this? Uh, Yeah, what does it say? It says, unveiling. Get the hell out of here. Of the Fiji mermaid. Scans confirm bizarre creature discovered in Japan is part fish, part monkey, and part reptile. No. <laughs> so I mean, the mummy the was brought so, so calm down. there's a little bit of a backstory the mummy was brought back from japan by an american sailor and donated to a historical so- society in 1906 okay dude um it was x-rayed and ct scanned for the first time it seems to be a hodgepodge of at least three different species externally so somebody must have made this thing yeah of course. of course oh okay okay dude i was <laughs> Because when you look at this thing, you're like, okay, this is this is an alien, right? But somebody put this thing together, and then and then they found it. It was like in a tomb or something. There's yeah. So they would apparently in the early 1900s, this was like a thing that people would make these mermaids. And then- yeah, I'm trying to remember. Maybe Kyle can find it. There's one in the UK too. It's like. It's called like a flapper or something. It's made from a skate. Let's see, UK skate mermaid. Um, and it created a whole thing. Oh, oh boy. Just people love doing a good hoax. Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, right now it's big in the in the Can't in Mexico. It. They they did basically a, a disclosure thing in front of Congress. And yeah. there's this known hoaxer there named Jamie Musan, but he brought out two alien alien mummy bodies and now oh yeah this, yeah i saw yeah, yeah there's this huge controversy going on right now and he's a known hoaxer so everybody right off the bat was like this is a hoax like how would anybody believe this guy but supposedly now there's actual scientists who have been uh like doing scans on it x-ray ct scans looking at the actual genetic material the dna and legit scientists are coming out and saying that wait a minute, it's definitely not something that was constructed as this mermaid is. It's an actual entity that existed or something. So look Mm. into that. If you, it's called the NASCAR, NASCAR mummies or something. I can't remember exactly, but it's wild times, man. Wild times. Yeah. I can't (laughs) think of the guy's name. Fuck. I just heard about this yesterday, but it's like one of like the, you know, more famous uh, UFO encounters. And the guy has like done the UFO circuit for years, for decades. And he finally, I guess, just admitted like either this week or last week that the whole thing was a hoax after like 25 years. And he's just like, yeah, it was fake. I made it up. What do you get out of that? I I was just going to say notoriety, attention. Well, so this is uh, one of the dumb. It it seems so dumb. And this is one of the weird things about that uh, skinny Bob alien that I've talked about before on the pod. Because nobody's ever taken credit for it. And it's just like, what you think there's no point in like that. And when somebody actually like says, I discovered this or whatever, nobody has ever taken credit for this fucking supposed alien footage. And you're just like, why, why would anybody do this? You know, it's so strange. Yeah. Hmm. 
odd thing to do. People are people are bizarre creatures. I love how whenever I start Florida. talking about aliens, Forrest is so disinterested. He hates it. My wife's texting. I have to go to a thing tonight. Okay, where because I'm missing Boo at the zoo, I now have to go to. Uh, I don't know what the hell it's called. Something where people decorate their cars and kids walk around and ask for candy out of the car. Also okay. at the zoo. I don't know. That what sounds it's called. great, man. Have yeah. fun. Okay. It'll be so a good time. It's not that I'm disinterested in you. It's I'm far more disinterested in this stupid kid thing I have to go to tonight. But Boo I'm getting a, zoo. I'm getting a million texts about, hey, can you bring down fishing lines so that we can hang the decorations from the car? Make sure it's clear, not blue. Oh, it has to be strong enough. And, and then the last one was. Also, I thought it might be funny to have some lobster defrosting in the back, and then we can eat them when we get home for dinner. Did you freeze them whole? Is this a good idea? No, just tails. Never mind then. Not a big deal. Do you have, you know, it just fucking this is, never it's ends. It's just going this on and on. It never ends. To. It never ends, bro. All right. Um, I, I want to add some value to the Brosners here, because Kyle, last time we recorded in person, brought uh, some lovely yellowtail. Oh, yes. And he, he gave, uh, we, we got a bunch of nicely filleted yellowtail fillets. And uh, I made I made mine last night, so I I was on the fence. I, I texted Forrest. He was like, "Marinate them, put them on the grill." But it was getting late. I didn't feel like cleaning the grill because sure. I haven't cleaned it. So, so whatever. So I ended up doing the uh, the foil packet. Mm -hmm. You know, a little olive oil Very and it kind nice. of steams itself, right? Very nice. How um, did you? What you? They were frozen, right? So how did you handle that? Did you I defrosted. Them? I defrosted them in the fridge and then okay. let them get to room temp. Gotcha. Um. I overcooked it by like a minute. Mm -hmm. And as you know, with fish, man, a minute makes a big difference. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. I was just pissed. The seasoning was great. Tasted great. Forrest, what is the ultimate way to prepare a lovely filet of fish? Well, it's like asking what the best way to cook meat is. Different fish, different methods. All right. So yellowtail, it's a common fish. Yeah. I'm going to be cooking mine that Kyle gave me. I want to okay. know. Here's a controversial answer, but it's the right answer. The best Aww. way to prepare yellowtail is to not. Ah, it. get out of here. Yeah, it's to prepare it. Or sorry, to eat it raw. It's to um, unprepare it. Unprepare it. So I like yellowtail the best as pokey, but I didn't want to suggest that because it's a pain in the ass. Um, so I like to take my yellowtail and make sure all the bloodline is cleaned out of it so there's none of that red stuff. And then Kyle, hop on here real quick. And then when it's when you pulled it out the freezer, when it's semi-frozen, so it's not all the way thawed out and it's not uh and it's not rock solid. You can cut it into perfect cubes, like you get at a you know at a pokey restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. And you put it over paper towels so it sucks the moisture out while it continues to defrost. Okay. Then you throw it in the bowl, add your seasonings, your spices, a nice big hot steamy bowl of uh, sushi rice, and throw mm -hmm. the cold fish on top with furikake and sriracha and all that good stuff. Bunch of soy sauce, go to town. Wait, okay, so delicious. Did, did you get rid of the uh, the blood the blood veins that Forrest just said in the fish that? We have when they prepare it down there, yeah, they get rid of the, the blood, they cut it out. The so, yeah. so, you're telling me that I could just pop this fish out, put it in a paper towel, and Eat then it. once it defrosts, like just put some shit on there, some mm -hmm. stuff, throw it in some sushi rice, and I can eat that. Yep, 100%. I, I won't die. You won't die. You can just <laughs> chew, you can just chew on it like a, like a dog treat right now. Wow, because I have two fillets, and I'm definitely going to do that with one of them. It's really yep. good. I and did if that you, with mine, and that's why that's what I've been doing, and it's delicious. really you've been doing a lot of pokey with yours. Yeah, what? but like with the chips and that yeah, sort yeah. Of thing. You want a little trick, Peter? Yeah, a little trick. Santa Monica Seafoods pokey sauce saves you nine steps of mixing shit together. <laughs> it's available at every grocery store. Okay, um, and you just you cut your fish up, toss it in there lightly because it's pretty strong stuff. Light toss in there, ready to Light go. Toss. Yep. Okay, that's dude. It. Like no joke. This is the most excited thing I get from the podcast like it, we talked about this before and i like been taking furious notes but the fish that you gave me and i never told you this it was so i was so pissed off dude our fucking brand new fridge that came with the house two years old uh -huh. stopped working oh no and way for no reason so we were like we just went in there and we were like hey is 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 the fridge just warm everything was fucked because um. we hadn't been in there in like a full day and i'm just like dude we lost everything Dude, I would have a... gladly brought you more. You just got to let me know. <laughs> well, come on. I just had a child. I, it was just like I was taking care of the fridge thing in and of itself was insane. But life pro tip bought a bought a two hundred dollar a two hundred dollar fridge off of offer up and now have that in the garage just in case. So now Back we have up. an extra fridge. 
Nice. Have you guys ever done the foil pack to oh, make yeah. fish? Oh, it's, yeah. I don't think it's I have. so easy, dude. Elaborate. Get, so if you don't like, you know, if you're not going to grill it and you don't want to eat the fish raw, like especially if you get yeah. like a flaky white fish, like halibut mm -hmm. or cod mm -hmm. or something like that, mm -hmm. and you don't want to stink up your house. Oh, okay. No smell, dude. Really? So, yeah. you know, if you pan sear it, it's going to stink up the house a bit. Yes. You know, for like 24 hours. So all you do is you take the raw fish. You can also stick some vegetables and stuff in there. You just take a piece of foil, put each fillet in the foil, mm -hmm. put like a teaspoon of olive oil over the top and it kind of falls off the sides and goes to the bottom. Squirt a bunch of lemon juice. I put some like Kalamata olives and capers on there and some Ooh. dill. Then you, you seal it up tight and it, the liquids, the lemon juice and the olive oil steam it mm -hmm. in the oven at 400 for like, I'd probably do like 10 minutes and then check it. Mm -hmm. And it's just perfect, man. Yeah. Like juicy steamed, you know, like it basically steams in the olive oil and lemon juice. No it's smell. It's fantastic. fantastic. It's easy, easy to do. Super that works. Easy. The other thing about that recipe is it works with every fish. Mm -hmm. There's not mm -hmm. one fish that you can try that with where you're like, oh, I really wish I'd done it another way. Like it yeah. always cooks the fish nicely that way. And you, and is it easy? Is it harder to overcook it this way? Uh, no, I fucked up last oh, night right. and overcooked mine because I was doing other shit and just like left it in like probably a minute, minute and a half too long. Okay. So it's just a little bit chewier than it should have been and less flaky, but um, we just check it. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Can we put yeah. out, can we put out some special uh, paid, paid videos that are just like cooking classes? Dude, I have thousands of fish, lobster, crab, mushroom, meat recipes like that i've gathered over the year i have a little like shitty notebook filled with them that have all penciled down down in my house can we just um, get together and put say, together every, a cooking video every time sure. we're there you're cooking some you're doing some something with fish yeah i feel like yeah. yeah i mean i have to justify my addiction to killing fish by making them delicious so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah i love that though that's a good way to look at it yeah use um, all the fish dude we could definitely do a series of cooking tips on wild caught stuff like i i would love to do that i've been, oh, man. I've been us patrick i've been pitching that for 10 years of all the yeah. wrong places so yeah no cooking shows are so huge right now like post malone has a cooking show a rapper what? I swear Post to God alone as a cooking show. What is he just like melt a Twix bar and eat it with a spoon? No, he's like, he's, I think he quit smoking weed and now he's cooking. Uh, huh. yeah. Ludacris Bronson. had a cooking show. Sebastian Maniscalco had a cooking what? show. I didn't know Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. The OG. I did know that one. I did know that one. This is what I'm talking about. This is big right now. I think, I think if you, when you add the spin on it of, of sustainable cooking and cooking, yeah. you know, and cooking the stuff that you're gathering and getting outside, I, like I'm interested in this and I hate this podcast, you know? <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> uh, I'm down. I like that. Brosner's way in. Let us know if you guys would watch, uh, us doing that. So, um, yeah, I think that's a good pod. I got to get on with some work. This yeah. Fun. I got to get packing. Same. I got to go to Paris. Yeah. Oh, have fun, dude. Yeah, man. Have fun. Send us a little, send us a little pick. I will party scene. I'm I'll sure I'll be posting to Instagram constantly. I will. Cause I'm a social media whore. So I will have fun. You guys <laughs> enjoy your children. I will pay for this when I get home and, uh, good, good night. Good, good night, night all. Thank you. No problems here. Eat my dick. Oh, that's Whoa. my new sign off. It's my new sign off. Wrong. Whoa. <laughs>